I got a discipleship group that meets uh, Sunday nights. Where you at? Where you at, discipleship group? We do this song and it explodes every time we do it. Amen? We're going to keep doing it. Don't get tired of it. I've gotten some uh, testimonies from the class. I want to just share you uh, one this morning. And, and I want to tell you this because, <clears throat> hallelujah. And I keep talking about this. We, you know, it's really easy to be carnal and be distracted by the external manifestations. And so it's important, ah, it's important that um, we recognize as spiritual people that God is doing stuff internally. And, and we don't need to know what it is, right? We may see the external, but we don't necessarily need to know the internal. But no, God is doing stuff internally. Um, and if you're feeling God doing something inside your life, you're at the right place. And if you're not feeling God doing anything in your life, you're at the right place. Shaba. See, they don't messed up. They, they printed the book in our language. <clears throat> and at Revival Life, we believe the book. And uh, we found out that love is the most important thing. And um, God is actually after us. He's after our hearts. He's after our hearts. <clears throat> so here, here's a... Mm. All right, check this out. <clears throat> okay, here we go. I got to get away from her. This is during the class, this is one of the testimonies I got this week. During the class, God was... Ha. Huh, ha. Huh, okay, here we go. <clears throat> I don't know Hannah was right here. Ha. <laughs> It's the low-hanging fruit. I'm between Lillian and Hannah. This is a good time. During the class. Touch your neighbor and say, get you some of that. Ah! During the class, God was telling me. Keep your husband. During the class, God was telling me that I am still trying to keep control. I keep trying to say when he's done, and he shows me he isn't. Who has found themselves living there for way too long? I keep trying to say when he's done, and he shows me he isn't. <laughs> Amen. During worship, he kept showering me with his love. At one point, Jesus showed me my heart with his name carved. And then my name was carved into his heart. Ha, ha, whoa, okay. Ooh, that one caught me by, <laughs> that one caught me by surprise right there. Ha, ha, ha. It really took me a while to grasp that just like he has claimed me, I have also claimed him. He picked me up in his arms like a child while journaling. God was telling me that he is always here. He never changes and that he wants me to come to him with my walls down. It was a constant theme during my time with him that at one point I asked him and he told me that I fear abandonment. He told me that it's what I need to hear because I still don't trust him to not leave me. I keep placing my past relationships as a template and God is trying to break that off me, but it's hard. It was good to hear God, God answer me when I asked. He tells me he wants me also. This class, is, this class has really pushed me to let my walls down and not care as much about what I think is expected of me. Just being in God's presence produces the change that I've been trying to come up with on my own. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. We, ha, we have recognized a revival life. We're not smart enough to get people into God. That he's just going to have to do it on his own. Some people are smarter than us and they have steps and plans and stuff. We're forced to rely on God. And uh, so we just let him, we just invite him every service. And so we let him do what he wants to do. I want to share a couple more uh, testimonies. <clears throat> Can we do that? Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Um, from the GO team, GO team is our people who are going. Yay, man. <clears throat> um, this is, I don't know what today is, but this is from the, what's the date today? 20th, okay. <laughs> so, just that it's the third. Excellent. Of what month? Honey. 
the third of triangle. All right, well, this is the, you know, anyways. Uh, on Saturday at jail, uh, someone got saved. That's cool, yeah. Um, had a revival at the, at, um, uh, someone got healed at the assisted living facility on Tuesday. Yeah, that's good. T Tuesday night, three people got healed at jail. Um, really cool. They, uh, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ha. Um, whoa, I'm getting rocked up here. Uh, um, they keep praying that the guys in jail get money, um, and it keeps happening. That's pretty good. I feel like I read in a book that Jesus cares about people in jail. He, he would actually view us through how we viewed them, too. I, I, I remember reading that somewhere. Uh, Wednesday night at jail, uh, someone got saved. More financial breakthroughs. Some guy got healed in a toe thing and sleep issues. That's good. Uh, on Saturday, 28 folks got saved. That's cool. And, uh, you know, it's not good to call out people's names. We want our reward in heaven. But Natalie led two people to Jesus. Where are you at? She's, she's, she's in mine in uh, Sarah's discipleship class. I just want to put that out there. Just not saying it's directly related. I'm just, you know. And uh, Wednesday night in the women's jail, four ladies got the Holy Ghost. Come on. Come on. Four ladies got the Holy Ghost. That'll change some things. We got some mail. I'm going to read you that as well. Is that okay? We got, we got prison mail. That costs money in jail. And they chose to send us a letter with their prison money. That's good, right? Their jail money. Um, I'm not going to tell you who it's from just for anonymity's sake because I didn't ask them if we could. <laughs> so it says to Revival Life Church care of Chelsea Rample, but the important part is Rival Life Church, because I'm part of Rival Life Church. How about you? Amen? Shaba. It says, it says here, dear Chelsea, and she meant to say and Carl, but she just says Chelsea. <laughs> dear whatever, yeah. Almost all the right letters. Um, this is such and such. Uh, we miss you all so much. We were moved from North Broward Jail to next door to Paul Ryan Jail. We do not receive any church service. We are in C2, starts giving us our locations we can go look for it too. We are in C7, the mental health dorm. Can you please check into getting church service brought into us, please? All caps, three underlines. We love and miss you. Watch this. This is how I know she's talking to me. Love and miss you all so much your sister in Christ and that's uh, her name where are you at Chelsea hand that back to Chelsea if you would please come on give it up hey listen Shaba Shaba I feel like that's a prayer request the church can lift up no yeah stand with me we go let's just pray real quick for a second just pray we're gonna pray for 30 seconds on this just pray that the prisoners can have their own jail service in the name of Jesus come on pray in that I mean, maybe homegirl got the Holy Ghost. She could, she could plant her own church right there in that, in that ward right there. God can crash in. She has the Word of God, and we can just have a little Revival Life Church Mental Health Board dorm in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I would be so honored if that were to happen. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would plant something in there. You would give us favor to reach those people. That your name would be glorified. They would be saved and set free. Saved and set free. Saved and set free. The mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody said, Come on, give somebody a high five, touch and agree. Come on, amen. Give it up for Jesus. Ha, Shaba. Hey, hey. Thank you, Mike. Ha, if you got a Bible, you can turn to, uh, whoa. Ha, turn to all of it. Turn to Luke chapter 9. I'll be there in a second. Shaba. Hallelujah. Ha, how you doing, Hannah? Here's my goal with Hannah, just so you all know. Hannah was playing bass. I need Hannah drunk in the Holy Ghost for eight days. She beat me in the trunk or treat wars last year. And if she's laid out in the spirit, she cannot beat me again this year. I have enlisted some help this year. 
No, I am winning. I am winning. We need at least two more people to, uh, to, to all you got to do is, you know, decorate your little trunk. And no, eh, people weren't that excited about yours. It was all rigged. Um, <laughs> just throw some, tr- so all you got to do is hand out candy. Set up, you know, put something in your trunk, set it up, hand out candy. Amen? Not that difficult. Amen? Yeah. Kids are worth it. Amen? Yeah, yeah there we go. All righty. <clears throat> so, hey, last, ha, uh-huh. ha, huh. okay, here we go. Shaba. Amen. I am feeling all right. God is doing good things in our midst, people. Hallelujah. All right, here we go. Shaba. All right, I have a message written, and I'm going to deliver it now. Shaba. Shaba. Here we go. Hallelujah. I know what I'll do. I'll recap last week. Last week, mm, we started our Rhythms message series, and uh, Rhythms, wow. We talked about spiritual disciplines that help make revival stick. Ah, like when the anointing falls on you and it sticks, right? You can't just leave it here. Like it just starts bubbling up out of your belly. It just starts bubbling like fire out of your belly, burning away all the chaff, right? Burning away mm, everything that you've built that contradicts with what God has called you to be, right? The man-made structures that we've built in response to what we think God wants, instead of allowing God to build his own structure, right? Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm doing good right now, honey. I'm feeling all right. I'm not preaching so good, but I'm feeling amazing at this very, mm, I'm feeling amazing at this moment. Okay, here we go. And so last week, we talked about ha, huh, the internal spiritual disciplines. And uh, wow, this week, we're going to talk about external spiritual disciplines after I can get my brain out of the clouds and talk to you here for a moment. Here's the deal. Let me tell you what's up. We live in a 24-7 world nowadays. There was a time where I could go home from work, and many of you understand this. Work always goes with you. You never get away from work, and guess what? That's not okay. That's a world we're living in, but that's not Okay, and this 24-7 world produces endless productivity, endless workaholism, endless distraction, endless burnout, endless anxiety. And you might say, that's not really me, Pastor. And what I'm telling you to do is leave your phone home for three days. See if you can. See if you can disconnect and just go live your life without a phone. This is hard to believe, but you can actually live without one. If you are more than six feet from your home, your, your, your phone, your heart will still function. Your lungs will take air in and out. Your blood will continue to pump. I know it doesn't feel that way. I know it feels like if you're away from that, then all of a sudden the entire social order of your world will collapse upon itself. It's possible that you may get a junk email and not see it. For three hours, someone may post something that they ate and you may not like it within 20 minutes. It is possible. And I'm here to encourage you today. You can make it. (laughs) You can do it. (laughs) You can do it. You can do it. But you're like, I don't want to. Of course you don't because you are enslaved in this 24-7 society that we're living in today. You can't. I don't want to do it. Of course you don't. I could quit if I wanted to. We've heard people say that before, right? And we mock them. Then why don't you go ahead? I don't want to. Of course you want to be an addict. Everybody does. No, you are addicted. And we can't, whoa, we can't disconnect. And that's the way society has planned it. There is a a way of life, and we've grown accustomed to this way of life, and it's not healthy. Can you hear me? It's not healthy. This, 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 this system that they call life, it, it, it destroys ultimately our souls. It destroys our peace. It destroys our bodies. It destroys our relationships. It, 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 it wears down our society. And, 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 and it also destroys God's very creation. This is not what we were created for. The whole world grows exhausted because humanity has forgotten to enter into God's rest. We have to enter into 
his rest. He never says, my rest will come and invade you. It's never a promise of God that we, do, we just do whatever we want and one day he'll send his rest. It's not a promise. And people wonder why they can't get rest because that has to actually be a goal. Peace has to be a goal. And so we're talking about spiritual disciplines. Now, I am not a uh, conspiracy theorist at all. I think most people who are accused of leading conspiracies aren't smart enough to come up with conspiracies. I definitely don't think that many, many people can get together and have a conspiracy because the majority of them are just not bright enough, right? So I do not believe in conspiracies. I do, however, believe that there is a prince of the power of the air. And I do believe there is an adversary. And I do believe that there is sin on the earth. And the sin is collaborating to make us get distracted from the one who created us and distract us from our true purpose to love and know God. Amen? This is what we were created for. And there actually is an adversary who doesn't want you to enter into rest because you'll find God there. We can keep you distracted, then you don't encounter God. We can keep you focused on something other than God's best, then you can give your life to something that will bring no eternal reward. And I'm here to kick that in the mouth. Amen? That's what I'm here for. This is what we're here for. So these, whoa, wow, yeah, yeah, woo. Mm -hmm. These spiritual disciplines that we're talking about, these spiritual disciplines, they're subversive to the powers of our society. They're, 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 they're subversive to the powers of this world. It's us telling the enemy that you will not dictate my life. It's us. As we practice spiritual disciplines, we tell the enemy, you cannot dictate my values. You cannot dictate my day. You cannot determine what I do with my life. I determine with the help and empowerment of Holy Spirit. Amen? We want God in our lives. Amen? We have to go after that. That doesn't passively just come to us. God isn't just waiting on the side of the road for somebody to, to stroll by. We have to go after God's best. We have to actually put in effort to enter God's peace. Every day we're being bombarded by a worldview that is antithetical to God's values. You have to understand. We have to be aware. And I don't want to be suspicious, and I don't want to be on edge, and I don't well, want to be nervous this is not the life, and that's not the life where I'm looking for the devil all the time. But I need to be aware that the powers of this world want your time, they want your money, they want to be the most important thing in your life. If you don't have your own values, somebody else will determine them for you. This world is looking to tell you what to value. And by the way, that thing they want you to value makes them money gives them power, gives them authority. We have to choose. We have to purposefully choose to walk out our faith, to walk out our, our, our proclamation that Jesus Christ is king of our lives. Can, can you say amen? You know that how radically different that is from this world. You understand how radically different that this mm, This world wants you to like, wants our kids to, to like, Talk us into going broke so they can have a certain pair of shoes. This world wants you to finance your future for a phone. This world wants you to be broke so you can have the right year car. Could care less about what your kids need. Could care less about, I mean, I, <laughs> I never heard an advertiser say, listen, you should absolutely go on this cruise Unless you haven't funded your kid's college education yet, then go ahead and get Florida prepaid tuition. And once you pay that off, come on the crew. They don't say that. They say, man, you want to be a good parent? Look at all these families having a good time. You want a good family too, don't you? Spend money you don't have on a cruise. Five days and nine months of debt. Amen? Come on. That, I mean, that's, that's, mm, that's what the world tells you. You know what you do to make your marriage really special? You need to go into $30,000 of debt because nothing says I love you like a mortgage. Mm. 
as believers, we're supposed to have slightly longer-term vision. Amen? We're supposed to be the ones who understand delayed gratification. We're supposed to be the ones that say, man, Jesus laid down his life for me. What does it look like for me to lay down my life for the purposes of God? As opposed to, I need fed right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, <clears throat> we, like, we can get into the trap thinking, you know, I'm saved. I'm a follower of God. And, and I've, I've laid down my life. And now, now I'm good. But, but Jesus, he, he spoke about this mindset in, in, in Luke chapter uh, 9. He says, if anyone wishes to come after me, watch this, he must deny himself and take up his cross. How often? Daily and follow me. Daily. He's talking about daily choosing him. What does that look like to daily pick up our cross? We're not talking about a one-time deal. We're not talking about going to church on Sunday and I'm good to go. We're talking about daily. Now, I, I, I'm, I'm angry as I'm speaking this, but I'm not angry at you, all right? So if it feels that way, I'm a little worked up from worship. I'm well caffeinated. And I'm angry with stupidity, right? I really, I dislike the stupidity of this world and how people fall under its guise. And, and, and Jesus, like, he understood what was coming at us. Whoa. He actually understood what was going on. He's like, listen, the world's going to keep coming at you even after you make a declaration. Hallelujah. The world's going to keep coming after you even after you get filled. Daily, you're going to have to decide, I need to lay down what the world wants me to be so I can be who Jesus wants me to be. Every day, I got to check my heart. <clears throat> we have uh, leadership team meetings, and, um, and we have leaders with, uh, we have meetings with uh, just some, some of the, um, the, the, the leading ministers in this church, the um, uh, my wife and I and the, the Thomases, excuse me, the Paganos and the um, Rentlers. And, and uh, I, I am regularly, we have to make a decision, hey, we're, we're going to follow the Holy Ghost in this next season. Like we've seen what's happening here and there, and it's really tempting to do something else, but we're following the Holy Ghost. We have to consciously, as a church, make this decision. We can't go at things that sparkle. Like I, I, I know there's people who are smart enough to run this thing on their own. I'm not. We need God. In Revival Life Church, we need God. I'm just not that smart. I'm not that creative. I'm, I'm, I'm not that managerial. I'm not good enough to do just what looks good. I actually need God. And so it's not all that neat all the time because, again, whoa, I can't pre-plan things all the time. I just going to have to rely on God. And so what we're going to have to do in, in our lives is actually daily choose I have to follow God today. And if we're following God, watch this, it means we're not following something else. That's the part that we sometimes forget about, like, If you're away from God, man, I, I got a word for you. Like, God loves you right where you're at, and you just, you just receive him. That's awesome. And his love's too good to leave you there, though. Yeah. Right? Because tomorrow, like, remember what you just stepped out of? That's still waiting for you. You can go ahead, Lily. Go ahead. Make a run for it. You're good. <laughs> I, see, I see you scooting over there. You're good. And we need, to act, whoa, we need to actually lay down some things so we can take up our, our identity in Jesus. I hope. Okay. As we have spiritual disciplines, last week we talked about inward spiritual disciplines. As we, as we conduct our spiritual disciplines, what we're doing is we're deciding that this part of our time, this part of our brain, this part of our energy is devoted to God, right? We have consecrated it to God. We've set it apart to God. And what we're doing is we want to make God the biggest part of our lives. Now, that doesn't mean we've got to spend the majority of our time at church. No, that's not what I'm talking about. But we want God to be the biggest part of our lives. We want God to be the biggest part of our lives. And, 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 and when we do that, when, when the, you know, the bigger our God is, the more safe we are to take risks. The bigger God is in our lives, the safer we are to take risks. Now, when you encounter Jesus, when you meet God and he becomes your everything, then all of a sudden what people say about God is not nearly as important. What people say about you following God all of a sudden isn't nearly as important, right? It's not all of a sudden when you have a big God on the inside, you're, 
you're free to follow God. You're, you're free to take risks for God because you're not terrified of the rejection of the system that runs this world because you've already decided that doesn't decide who you are. Right? You've already decided, guess what? You, you, you can't reject me. I've already rejected you. It's like getting fired from a job that you never took. Like, you're fired. I don't actually work here. I don't know what to tell you. I don't. Sorry, I don't. Sorry. Can I get a severance check? Like, I don't know what to say. I don't work here. I don't work here. Right? And so when the world is trying to dictate how we live our lives, we're like, yeah, no, no, no thanks. I've, I've already decided another lifestyle. And then they, oh, here comes the ostracism. Oh, people that I'm not concerned about are disproving me. It's not, I'm sorry. I know you feel empowered, but I don't value your opinion. I've already been accepted by my God, and I'm settled. Like, I'm good. Like, I'm, I, I'm, I, you know, if you need the acceptance of the public, I, I feel bad for you, but I don't, right? I'm not going to go there. I'm not, though. I don't, like, I'm, you know. And so we need a big God in our lives who are free to take risks. And, and, and these inner disciplines create a big God on the inside of us. When we encounter God in the quiet place, in our Bible reading, like we talked about last week, in our, in our journaling, and in, in our praise and worship, uh, in, 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 in our times of fellowship, in our times of prayer, when we encounter God internally, then all of a sudden, when the little voices tell us, you know, things that are contrary to our true identity, we're like, well, that's not actually what God told me because I heard him earlier today. We get a big God on the inside, and all of a sudden, we can take internal risks. Like, maybe I can let some walls down and trust. Maybe I can actually let love in because I'm not rejected. Maybe I can, I can be secure and I don't have to listen to these voices. And so we want to have these inner spiritual disciplines uh, so that we can grow a big God on the inside, but we can't stop there. Jesus never said that what I want you to do is get saved and join a church and sit under someone's preaching and everything's going to be fine. No, no, no. We actually need to be outwardly manifesting uh, this big God that's internally. And the way we do that is through our external or our outward spiritual disciplines. We get a, when we start um, practicing outward disciplines, then all of a sudden we get a big outer God. Is this making sense? The God out there is bigger. Then all of a sudden we can start taking risks out there. Now I don't have to be afraid of what's going on internally or externally because I'm seeing God in my everyday life. Amen? And so the rhythm of this world, uh, I like to call it run and hide. And here's what it looks like. I, I'm constantly running, trying to catch up with everything that needs to get done. I'm constantly striving, constantly trying to get ahead, constantly trying to say with the world, the world is determined who I'm supposed to be, and I'm constantly trying to make those goals. I'm trying to achieve what they told me. I'm trying to get the acceptance. I'm running, 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 running until I can't do it anymore, and then I hide from it. Maybe, maybe I don't know how you hide. I don't know how you disconnect. Maybe, maybe you have to like just turn off your cell phone and you just don't get stuff done when you should be working, but you're just burnt out. Maybe, maybe you drink more than you should, maybe to excess. Maybe you're seeking physical affection outside of godly means, and, and that's how you're, how, maybe, maybe it's substances, maybe it's anger. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know how you hide. I don't know how you hide, but that is the, that is, that, that's the rhythm of this world, that we run and then we hide. It's not real rest because the work is still hanging over us. And so what we do is we're hiding from the work. And what we're trying to do, instead of being trapped in this world system of run and hide, run and hide, we're trying to create rhythms of work, rest. Work, rest. Now, biblically, when uh, God talked to the children of Israel about having a Sabbath, a day of rest, what he instructed them to do was on the sixth day, they were to collect extra rations. So on the seventh day, they could rest. See, this is very different than hiding. This is very different from hiding. Hiding looks like you don't hear your kids tell you that they're hungry. I don't hear the bill collectors calling me. I don't hear the work that needs to get done. I'm hiding from it. As opposed to now I have worked so that I can have a set time of rest. I have decided that I am resting. May, may, I don't know whatever time of rest you have. I don't want to, I'm even hesitant to, to speak something out that fear that you'll take it as law. But there are, I have uh, Christian friends who take a full 24 hours of Sabbath. I have friends who take a four-hour Sabbath. You work it out on your own. 
uh, spiritually, mentally, and physically. But the important part is you have to actually work to enter into his rest. What, what does that mean? Maybe maybe you're a, uh, a homemaker or uh, maybe you're not a homemaker. Maybe you're a, a single mom or a single dad. And, and, and the idea of your house being a mess, like you cannot be at peace when your house is a mess. I, I personally don't deal with that, personally. <laughs> per, per, personally, I don't deal with that. But I know people who do, right? I know people who can't rest while the house is a mess. And so you're like, I have to rest. I'm completely burnt out. I'm just not going to look at it for a day. No, 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 no. What's better is you say on the time before your Sabbath, you work extra hard to get the house clean. And now while you're resting, you don't clean because you've determined that it's time of rest. But you're not avoiding the work. You worked harder so you can enter into the rest. Does this make sense? I don't know why I'm going to tell you this. Um, there's a popular tattoo that people like to get. I hope nobody here has it because I'll feel really embarrassed. I'm not trying to call anybody out. And it says, fear no man or no man can judge me. You can say that if you are actually submitted to God. If you're submitted to God, then no one can judge you. But the Bible says that we're to judge all people, though. Not walk in judgment. But the judgment that many of these people get these tattoos are walking under because they've not actually completed the work to enter into God's rest. So in order to try to get rest, they have to say things like, I reject judgment. I reject judgment. No, no, you're not actually under judgment. That's actually conviction. And conviction is good. We don't want to reject conviction. And so we don't want to be not taking care of things in our life. And when we try to rest, we're under conviction that we should have got something done. Let me explain it to you a different way. It's like when you're at work and you don't work for the first six and a half hours. In the last hour and a half, you go in a panic, you work hard to get the stuff done, or your boss is going to find out you were surfing Reddit all day, right? Like, this is what, this is, the right? Like, 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 Jesus is coming back. Let me hurry up and get some stuff done before he finds out. I understand the struggle. I've been gilded twice, right? Like, I, I get it. I get it. I get it. But in order to enter an arrest, we have to actually work to enter into the rest. It actually has to be part of our work. Is this making sense to anybody? Is this, is this ministering to anybody? Yeah, I hope it does. I hope it does. So, whoo, okay, all righty. I am not going to finish in time. So listen. So we want to create rhythms of work and rest. Now, here's what's really, here's what's really interesting. Genesis chapter 1, God... In Genesis 1, and, and, and later uh, with, with, with the, the Hebrew children, he like did the ultimate put down of all the gods of the day. Now, the gods of the day always required more from people, always required greater sacrifice, always created, always desired more money. If you feel like God is always wanting more from you, like he's a taskmaster, you're, you're hearing the wrong voice. You're hearing the wrong voice. What it requires from you is faith in Jesus, Right? But listen to this, that's not that's not my point. Um, so, so in the midst of all this, these gods that wanted more and more and more, to the point of Abraham's day, in the day of Abraham, all the gods of that region demanded your firstborn son be murdered. You had to sacrifice your firstborn son. So, of course, that's what Abraham heard when he had Isaac. And then God interrupted and said, no, 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 no. That's not, we're not doing like the other gods here. This is not, this is different, Right. And so our God, hear me, our God, while all the other gods were looking for more, our God mandated, watch this, rest. He said, I'm actually going to be the big God around here, and you are going to rest and watch me be God. That is your God. That is your God. In a restless world, Yahweh requires rest. We decided a long time ago that prosperity around here is not based on money. It's based on the presence of God in our lives. And I'm trying to be the richest man in Boca. Amen? I hope you are too. Amen. Amen. And so this world wants us to get caught up in money. And like we said last week in Luke 12, 15, Jesus spoke, and I use the message version because that last little phrase is a little more clear. He says, take care, protect yourself against the least bit of greed. Remember this? Life is not defined by what you have, even when you have 
a lot because the voices of this age are going to let you know, hey, if you just get a little bit more, how much more do you need? Just a little more. All you need is a little bit more, a little more money, a little more sex, a little more power, a little more pornography, just a little bit more, and then, and it's a lie of the devil because you can't ever get enough. It's never enough because only God satisfies. And you have to enter in his rest to get it. And so this peace of God, this, this presence of God, we need, to, we need to guard it. We need to protect it. We need to cultivate it. We need to value it. And we need to discipline ourselves to have an intentional life with God. We have to discipline ourselves so we have an intentional life with God, not just skip it along ignorantly. And, and, and we, as we talked about here, I don't have time to go into it, we're, we're far more um, in love with the process here than the outcome. We're more interested in the process than the outcome. And the world is preaching outcomes. You need to be this person. You need to own those things. And we're like, no, actually what you need to be is a person of integrity who walks with God and waits on the Lord. This is who we're going to be. This is what we're looking for. And Paul told Timothy as such, he said, discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness. And, 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 and I, I need you to, to see something here. This is not a work of grace. This is not a work of the Spirit. It's not a fruit of the Spirit. It's actually something that we have to do. We need to discipline ourselves for the purpose of godliness. Again, Jesus said it in Luke 14. I always like the words in red. 1411, Jesus said, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. That's futility right there. And he who humbles himself. Now, who's going to do the humbling? Ourself. I tell you what, Jesus said, you know, if you don't throw yourself on the rock, the rock will be thrown on you. Listen, put yourself on the rock. It's ugly when the rock falls in you, right? Has anybody been lifted up to a great height and then I'd rather put myself down there, amen? So this is a choice that we have to make as believers. And so we want to embrace these spiritual disciplines because they create godly rhythms in our lives. I'm going to quickly go through this. We did last week the inward. This week we're going to do the outward. I'm going to go over three very quickly, and then we're going to pray in the Holy Ghost, and you're going to go home, amen? Amen? You got to figure, how, how, many, how many women in the jail got the Holy Ghost, was it? Four? I mean, someone here today, amen, could get the Holy Ghost, amen? Someone here today could get the Holy Ghost, amen? First, outward discipline, and we have to do this as a discipline to God. Like, I'm disciplining my body. I'm disciplining my heart by doing this. Our first outward discipline is serving. It's serving. Now, two of the deadliest, deadly sins, pride in slothfulness or laziness. Pride and laziness hate serving. They hate serving. I don't know if you've seen in revival kids, these kids whose lives are being absolutely transformed because some people have decided to serve. Because some people have laid down their lives and, and made the what yeah. And made the amazing sacrifice of staying an extra hour and a half at church, people's lives are changed. Now, it's hard for me to fathom a Christian that has to be convinced to serve. It's like, it's like convincing a Christian that Jesus actually died on the cross, you know, or there's a trinity. or Like, it's hard. It's hard for me to get it. But some believers believe, like, you know, it's just what goes on in my heart. And I'm just, that's, it's not actually, like, it's, this, this whole thing is not about understanding more and learning more, and learning the dances, and learning the songs, it's, it's, there's actually, you know, remember Jesus was with the disciples, and they um, were washing feet, and, and this stuff was happening, and all these people around him thought they were so spiritual, because they had so much knowledge, they just knew so much stuff, so they're just so spiritual, and, and Jesus in um, John chapter 13, he's like, man, you call me teacher, you call me Lord, you know, I am, but he says in verse 15, Luke uh, 13, 15, he says, he says, I gave you an example that you should do as I did to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a slave is not greater than his master. Now, in this conversation, one person was the master. Remember his name? Jesus. Amen. A slave is not greater than his master, nor is the one who sent greater than the one who sent him. Watch this. If you know these things, smarty pants, if you know these things, you're blessed if you do them. 
Quit talking about how big a Christian you are. Let me see it with your serving. Hold a door, hold a baby. You want to show me you're spiritual? <laughs> hold a door, hold a baby. Because if, if we can't get that right, if we can't understand that pride wants us to think that we need to be on top, if we can't figure out that we're actually called to serve, then we've missed the whole thing. We love to know stuff. Doing is harder. Doing is more spiritual. It is actually more. And we want to be motivated by love to serve. Because every Christian is gifted to serve. Amen? Second spiritual discipline. I want you to do these as disciplines. Like, I need to be doing this to further my relationship with Jesus. Is stewardship. 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 Now, stewardship involves, watch this, our time and our money. Our time and our money. Because people financially give at Revival Life Church, we feed I don't know how many people out there on the streets. I don't know how many people we give free Bibles to. I don't, I don't know. But because people are faithful at Revival Life Church with their finances, because people are faithful to give God part of their time, there's people out on the streets getting saved, getting healed, getting fed, getting delivered. There's people in the prison getting baptized in the Holy Ghost. There's the church of Jesus Christ is going to the least of these. I believe I read that in the book. It's a big deal. Amen? Now, listen, you only get so much time in your life. No one in here is going to get a longer week than you. You get the longest week in here. What are you doing with that time? Because after a fixed amount of time, it's over. The time is over. And we don't think enough about the fact that God has given us time and we need to manage it wisely. We need to steward our time wisely. It's a commodity. It's a precious commodity. And if we don't learn how to work and rest, we don't know how to manage our time, then it manages us. If you don't learn how to manage your money, your money will manage you. It will be the master of your life. Just like we need to, we need to manage our time, we need to manage our money in a way that honors God. Look at this. Look at Jesus. Jesus was so good at this. This is, this is, Jesus lived his life so intentionally. Three years of ministry, he's able to say this. John 17, 4, he says, I glorified you on the earth, having accomplished the work which you have given, having accomplished the work. How many people can say in the last 10 months, last nine and a half months, I have accomplished the work Jesus gave me to do in 2019? I have accomplished the work you have given me to do. I have in this month, in this month, I have accomplished the work you've given me to do. Jesus is like, no, I actually managed my time and was focused and I got it done. That convicts me. I'm convicted. I'm convicted. I've read a whole lot of internet that didn't do nothing for me. I've seen a whole lot of meals on Instagram. I've seen a whole lot of just babies. Doing nothing. And they all look the same to me. I'm sorry. They all look the same to me. I'll be like, honey, who, who is that? You're like, it's your niece. I'm like, I don't know. They look the same to me. <laughs> What's her name? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I have done the work. I've accomplished the work. We need to manage our time in a way. I want to be, I want to be at the end of my life saying, I, I accomplished what you called me to do, God. I was faithful with my time. I was faithful with my finances. Now listen, faithful with your finances starts with you tithing to God, right? My family, we have a set amount that we give every month. That's the baseline. That's before we give money to people or we give money to organizations or we give an uh, offering. So our, you know, tithe is the first 10%. Uh, we give more than that. And, and, and unless we don't have food, we don't touch that. And in you know, a long time that we've been together, it's only been one time we couldn't. Right? One time we couldn't give like what we had decided in our heart is what we're giving. And, and because of that, and this isn't a work that I have done, but because of that, my lifestyle is far better than my income. I live far better than my income. People see the things in my life and they're like, oh, you mom's like, I don't know why you're judging Jesus is faithful. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. Like, if you don't want him to be faithful, I feel bad for you. Like, because he's faithful. But I'm not going to deny Jesus because you don't know he's faithful. Like, he's faithful. My lifestyle is better than my income because God is the first in my finances, right? And so because I'm, I'm faithful with my finances, he's been faithful with my finances. If you're faithful with your time, he'll be faithful. You'll have enough time to do everything God has given you to do. You have all the time you need to do what God has called you to do. I need to say that to you again. You have all the time you need to do what God has called you to do. It's impossible for God to call you something 
that you're not able to do because you don't have the resources. It's not possible. It's not possible. Now, you may need to lay down some things, pick up your cross, and lay some things down that are not what you're called to do. You have to manage it faithfully. Third and final thing, whoever's doing music for me, come on up. And the third, third, <laughs> I'm not going to touch you because I need you to make music. Hallelujah. Let me say this very, very, very briefly. I want to I wanna just like, this isn't for everybody, but I want someone to be very convicted. If you don't manage your finances well and your family suffers, something about that in the Bible. First Timothy, let me just show it to you here. First Timothy 5.8. He says, uh, you know, if you don't provide for your own, especially for those of your own household, you've, just not, you've denied the faith and are worse than an unbeliever. Now, what's that? He's saying if you don't manage your money in a way faithfully. He's not saying if you're broke. I've been broke. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He loves the broke, right? He's not talking about the, He's talking about if you waste your money and your family suffers, that's worse than an unbeliever. Get your money together, right? Like, you actually don't need that gym membership. You need to get your kids some shoes, right? Like, cancel Netflix. Amen? Cancel Netflix. No, you don't actually need to get your nails done. Fellas, buy some clippers, cut your own hair. Like, take care of your family. No, you don't need the new Jordans. What you need to do is figure out how your kid's going to get a new backpack, right? Like, let's, right? Like, you don't need to go on that cruise. You need to figure out how to get some sort of certificate to get a better job. You know, you hear what I'm telling you? Like, be faithful with your finances. Manage it well so your family's not suffering, right? Last thing, last thing, that was just for you. That was just for you guys because I love you. That was a little bonus. You won't hear that in the podcast. The last thing, a little bonus. Last thing. Last spiritual discipline is sharing your faith. There is no way to look. There's, I mean, there's no, ha, I feel the anointing of God right now, Corey. Corey's preaching soon. Right? It's going to be fire. I'm going to be here. It's going to be good. Hallelujah. I love hearing him preach. There's no, like, you want to know what your spiritual gifts are? Start telling people about Jesus. Holy Ghost will just come out. He'll be like, oh, are you calling on me? Ha, let me show you what I can do, right? Like, this is what you want to do. You want to share your faith with people. Jesus wants us to share everything he's given us. Colossians 4, 5. Uh, hey, listen, here's what you do. Put that picture back up. Actually, put it up in a minute. I'll tell you in a second. Col- Colossians 4, 5. Paul says, we need to, watch this. Conduct yourselves with wisdom towards outsiders, making the most of every opportunity. Every opportunity we need to make the most of, Right? We need to be wise. We need to share the testimony of what God is doing in our lives, and we need to not let the pressures of this world dictate what we talk about. Just because you're in the salon don't mean you've got to enter into that. Just because you're in the barbershop don't mean you've got to enter into that. Just because you're at work doesn't mean you've got to enter into that. You, you can talk about the club, I'll talk about church. You talk about your nasty encounters, I'll talk about my holy encounters. I'm good. Come on. Are we, oh, we're not talking about those things in work? Oh, okay, then let me know. Because I thought we were talking about things in our lives and work. We're not talking about it. Let me know. Let me know. Oh, I can't talk about Jesus. You're going to start talking about the club? Well, now I'm talking about Jesus. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. You got them nasty hookups. I'll talk about my holy hookups. What's up? Now, if we're only talking about a work at work, tell them, let me know. Then I'll take it. I'll wait till before and after and a lunch break. But if we're talking about things, I'm talking about things. Oh, you saw that dude? Let me tell you about the angel I saw. It was amazing. Shaba, come on. You can't imagine what happened this weekend. Oh, you heard about the four ladies in jail got filled with the Holy Ghost, didn't you? That must be what you wanted to talk about. Oh, that wasn't what you want to talk about. Oh. Well, let me tell you that story. <laughs> four ladies got the Holy Ghost. Come on. She was there. She's pretty excited about it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't be obnoxious. Don't be at work and they're trying to do some labs and you're like, you know, you need to repent. I'm like, let them do their labs. Let them do their job. Let folk do their job. Let them do their job. They're not paying you for that. They're not paying you for that. But if you could do that at work, just, well, uh, we could do that. What do you know? I, I don't know we're talking about our lives. I, I, I can do that. But God, God, he wants us to share what he's done for us. And here's what you do. Watch this. Put the picture up. Watch this. This is complicated, so I need you to, like, if you've got a pen, write this down. Invite people to church. We even got people out front ready to say hi. So you don't even have to, well, you don't even have to greet them. We got people to do that for you. What you do is you tell people, man, I used to be in a spot where I was stuck. And then, you know, went to church, met Jesus, and life is better. 
Hey, you know it's free. You ought to come to church, right? You just give them a card. We have cards of love. You just invite them to church. Oh, my kids, whatever. We got a trunk or treat at my church. Free candy. Well, what you got to do? You got to be there when the candy's there. I mean, that's pretty much it. That's it. What do you want from me? You got to be happy, you know, probably for a minute or two. It might be hard. I get it. Come to church. All you got to do is invite people to church. Just make it part of your lifestyle to invite people to come meet God. Not only do people need to hear what God is doing in your life, you need to hear it as well. We need to hear what God is doing. We need to hear what God has done in our lives. And the more we talk about him, the more we remember, and the richer and bigger God gets in our life. Our resources are opportunities. All of our resources, our testimony, our finances, our time, these are all opportunities for us to encounter God outwardly. Amen? Stand with me. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We love you, and you're such a very good God. I thank you. Ooh. How about that? Shabbat. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like someone's about to get healed. Shabbat. Yeah, there's someone you got lower back issues. It's right at the bottom of your back right at the bottom and it's even kind of runs down both of your legs in the back and you might feel like a warm sensation happening I'm here to let you know that's the Holy Ghost of God he's healing you right now well, why is he doing that because he loves you because you look like your daddy Father God hallelujah hallelujah Father in the name of Jesus I, I pray that no one would leave here today with condemnation no one would leave thinking, man, I've really blown it. Like, Father, that you, that, like, you wouldn't allow the enemy to twist my words, Father. I pray in the name of Jesus that people would feel empowered to take control of their lives. That they would be empowered that through you, time doesn't have to manage them, but they can manage time. That through you, finances don't have to run their life, but they can run their finances, Father. That through you, they don't have to live a victim of this, this wicked world that we live in, Father. In these evil days, as you call it in your word, Father. But that through you, we can actually have a big God externally by just sharing with people what we have encountered. And Father, if you would just pray with me for a moment about our trunk or treat. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that there would be safe, that we'd have good weather on Saturday, Father. That the kids would have so much fun. Father, we would. Now I pray that all the kids that come would just have nice costumes and we don't have to tell anybody like, Take off the mask, like that's, that's a little horror, you know. But it'd just be, it'd be, it'd be good. It's a nice, fun, fun, clean time, Father. I pray for everybody who's serving at it, everybody that you've told to do a trunk for the trunk or treat, Father. I pray that uh, all the candy would be zero calorie in the name of Jesus. Cavity free. Cavity free and zero calorie, Father. And I pray that you would bless their week in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody said. Amen. Come on, give it up for the word this morning. Thank you, Jesus. That was so good. That was so good. You know, I just, I, I love it. I really felt like that was just a, a fatherly word this morning, you know. The fathers, they teach us how to manage our resources. You know, and pastor's just talking about our time and, and money and, and, uh, and uh, just how to live in the rhythm of God. In the rhythm of God. You know, we, um, on the worship team, we have something called the click track. And it sounds like this. And it keeps perfect tempo. Oh, yeah. Keeps perfect tempo. Keeps perfect tempo. It stays. There's a, there's, it has a rhythm. There's a, a beat that we're following, right? Yeah, yeah. And I, I just feel like this morning there's, there's people here. And uh, uh, there may be an area of your life or, or just your whole life that's just got no rhythm. It's kind of out of whack. Yeah. It's just got no rhythm. And I just I want to invite the ministry team forward now. We want to pray for you. So ministry team, if you would come forward, and if that's you this morning, I'm, I'm going to pray and dismiss you here in a minute, but as soon as we're done, I want you to come forward and get prayer because, because God, he's a God of order, and he wants to bring order into the chaos. He wants to bring order into the chaos. He wants to bring love into places where there is no love. He wants to bring vision into places where there is no vision. He wants us to live for more than just right now, but, but, but something greater than what we can see today. Amen? And in order to do that, do you guys, do I have your, your attention, guys? I see conversations happening around the room. In order to do that, we have to live in rhythms. Amen? 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 Let me pray for you. Father, I just thank you for this church. I thank you for the, the people that you have brought together in this house. 
Father, the people that, who, who were once uh, separate but are now a family, Jesus. And I just bless them in Jesus' name. I thank you for what you're doing in this season. And I just, I pray that it would increase. I bless the families of Revival Life Church, Father. I bless every children here and every child coming. Because there's a whole lot. And I just thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen, amen, amen. Can you give Jesus a shout this morning? Love you guys. God bless you guys. Have an amazing Sunday. We'll see you next week.